Ushering in the next gen Ryzen AM5 chips, Gigabyte has a new range of motherboards available for you to pick up at the same time. One of which is the new Gigabyte X870, a Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7. This board comes with the AMD Ryzen AM5 socket, but you don't actually have to use the new AMD Ryzen CPU on this board. Of course, it would be ideal to have the latest Ryzen CPU given the board's support. However, the nice thing about AMD is that you don't have to go and buy a new CPU with the new board all the time, unlike Intel. This board comes with support for 7000, 8000 and 9000 series Ryzen CPUs. AMD says that it will also support the next four generations of CPUs from the brand. So you can look at this board as a long-term investment too. Keep in mind that some previous AMD Ryzen series CPUs will have limited compatibility when used on this board. For the most part they will function just fine, but the 8000 series for example won't support the latest Gen 5 NVMe or PCIe slots. This is the limitation on the chip itself and not the board. The 7000 and 9000 series CPUs will have no limitations, so you will be able to use the PCIe 5x16 mode and Gen 5 NVMe. The one thing that the 9000 series can do over the 7000 and 8000 is support RAID 5. Unboxing the Gigabyte X870 Elite Wi-Fi 7, you'll get the motherboard itself and very few select accessories. This includes a bag with SATA cables, the G connector which is great for connecting the board to the case I.O. and the Wi-Fi 7 antenna. There's also some paperwork including manuals, warranty and a quick start guide. You'll also get an Aorus sticker. The X870 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 is quite a beefy motherboard. When it comes to new features, there are a few I want to mention. Gigabyte has now included an HDMI port on the inside of the board and on the back of the I.O. too. The internal port is called the sensor panel link. It allows you to connect the small LCD or sensor panels to the motherboard for monitoring your PC performance at a glance. I don't know exactly where you can get these sensor panels yet, but if you manage to get your hands on one, this board does support it. There's also a convenient new Wi-Fi 7 Easy Plug which has replaced the previous inconvenient screw antennas on the previous boards. This makes it a breeze to plug and unplug the antenna. Of course, Wi-Fi 7 is a big deal on this board specifically. You'll need a supported router to use it. Wi-Fi 7 is gradually rolling out, so again, the board is ready for whenever you upgrade. There's also a dual USB 4 Type-C port selection with up to 40 gigabytes per second and DisplayPort Alt support. Gigabyte has also added QFlash Plus to the back I.O. It is not new tech, but it has been limited to most of the master boards in the past. When it comes to RGB, there's one RGB LED header and three ARGB LED headers on the board. You'll find three PCIe 5 M.2 slots and one PCIe 4 M.2 slot. The board also includes one PCIe 5x16, PCIe 4x4 and one PCIe 3x2 slot. The board supports up to 256GB of DDR5 RAM. From a design point of view, the board does look good. The full black exterior is quite clean and there are a few Aorus decals here and there. One covers the M.2 slots and the other is slapped across the VRM thermal section. This specific part of the board houses an 8mm heat pipe and a 7 watt MK thermal pad all topped with an IO shield. Gigabyte boasts how toolless the board is and apart from the initial installation into your case, you don't really need any tools to get around. The M.2 slots include a screwless easy latch and the PCIe easy latch makes it easy to detach your GPU. Speaking of the Gen 5 PCIe slot, it is also armored for a bit more protection against sagging. The board doesn't have much RGB, you'll find a single light under the heatsink next to the M.2 slots. It can be synced with your PC using the Gigabyte Control Center. In classic Aorus Elite fashion, this board is quite subtle when it comes to RGB. Installing the X870 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 is just like any other ATX board. For this content, I actually built a new PC and moved away from my previous Cooler Master Cosmos C200M case. Gigabyte sent me the Aorus C700 glass case, which is the last PC product I needed to turn my PC into a full Gigabyte build. This case is pretty impressive and is likely one of the best looking models I have played around with. My day-to-day -day PC now includes the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 board, Gigabyte NVIDIA RTX 4080 Super Gaming OC, Gigabyte Aorus Water Force X2360 Cooler, Gigabyte UD1000 GM PG5 PCIe Power Supply, all packed into the Aorus C700 glass case. It took a few years to get there, but thanks to the brand for always being willing to support the channel. I think the final build looks pretty wild. The case is especially so clean. 
I didn't have much hassle getting the board into this case and plugging everything in. I attached the cooler, the GPU wired it all up and powered on the PC. I made sure to update the motherboard BIOS before anything else. I downloaded all the files on a USB from the support page. The BIOS itself is easy to navigate around too, there's an easy mode and an advanced mode. There's a lot of tweaks here and Gigabyte has highlighted key features of the board with the star icon. The smart fan mode offers fan customization and there are a few quick overclocking tools available which I'll get into in a bit. When it comes to benchmarks, I wanted to benchmark the AMD Ryzen 9900X and ran all these tests with the CPU clock speed at default. I also measured the motherboard temperature to see how well the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Wi-Fi 7 held up. During my tests, the AMD Ryzen 9900X peaked at 88 degrees during multi-thread tests and 62 degrees during single-thread tests. The CPU boosted up to 5.6 GHz and used a max of 163 watts of power. Keep in mind that these results are from the CPU being completely untouched when it comes to overclocking and voltage tweaks. The motherboard itself kept fairly cool too, with the VRM CPU area only peaking at 43 degrees. Across all these tests, the RAM PCB temperature peaked at 42 degrees. Keep in mind that throughout all these tests, I left the water force cooler and pump unbalanced, and the case fans were unbalanced too. So there were no extreme cases to try and keep the hardware cool at all. This is all default out of the box. So if you're someone who just buys a motherboard and puts a CPU in and uses a case without worrying about overclocking and cooling, this is the experience and the temperature that you'll likely get from this board. I then enabled overclocking, I enabled the precision boost overdrive enhancement which allows you to select a higher target temperature which results in a higher boost frequency on the CPU. There are 90, 80 and 70 degrees celsius options. I selected 80 degrees celsius level 1. I also enabled the TDP to 105 watt setting. This is a new setting on select gigabyte boards that bypasses the 65 watt TDP cap on the CPU to enable more performance. Of course, you can always overclock the board manually, which is likely the way you'll do it. But Auto OC and PBO are great user-friendly ways to squeeze more juice out of your system. You'll also need to remember that CPUs nowadays have little headroom for overclocking because they're so powerful and most of the time overclocked out of the box. So you'll likely be fine without touching any of these automatic overclock options anyway. After enabling these settings and turning up my fans and pump to performance mode, the motherboard remained at 40 degrees celsius around the CPU during these new benchmarks. The CPU itself then hovered around 72 degrees, so the change not only increased performance but showed that even if I left my cooling on the same settings, there wouldn't have been a major difference in the temperatures. I do enjoy PBO for what it is, an easy way to get more power out of your CPU if you have the cooling headroom for it. Here are some of the scores I got compared to when this was all disabled. Keep in mind that we're not reviewing your CPU here, but I wanted to show how well the board handles the heat. In this case, the cooling on the Gigabyte X870A Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 is good, showing a max of 42 degrees Celsius when running tests and leaving my fan system and pump unbalanced. Even after an hour of tests, this remained the same. There's a lot of room here for those who want to push their CPU's performance without worrying about thermals on the board. I then tested the RAM on the board. These tests were done again with out-of-the-box settings, and I compared them to the Asus ROG Crosshair X870E Hero board that I was also testing at the time. Apart from all of that, the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 performed quite well. Ultra-fast boot mode is incredibly quick, booting up to Windows 11 in just under 10 seconds. I also enjoyed the simple BIOS format and accessible tweaks the board includes to the system mainly for quick overclocking. Of course, the board is also future-proof, which is great. The Wi-Fi 7 support means it provides excellent speed and stability for next-gen wireless format. It might not be mainstream yet, but it's great to have as a feature here. With all that said, I do enjoy the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7. The board is feature-packed and offers some incredible cooling and voltage options, all while being highly accessible for all users. 
In SA, the board is expected to sell for 6,999 Rand. Compared to competitor brands, this isn't a bad price and it does secure you a few years of service without worrying about missing out on features. So those are my thoughts on this Gigabyte X870 or Resident Wi-Fi 7 board. Are you looking to pick one up? Let me know in the comments down below. Huge thanks to Gigabyte for sending it my way to test out. I really had a great time reviewing this product. While you're here, please do consider liking and subscribing for more PC gaming tech. And until next time, farewell.